I started out as a painter, as a visual artist. One of the first things I started to do was um, study murals in the Bay Area. But to be honest, I was kind of a frustrated painter, a frustrated artist, in that I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't convey my ideas um, as accurately as I wanted to in a painting. But then something happened in my life that was really sort of a wrench in the, in the machine, and that's that a close family member of mine uh, was killed in a very tragic way. And, and that was just the sort of thrust that I need, needed to actually open my mouth and speak the words that I wanted to speak, the ideas that I had. And, and painting just wasn't enough. It wasn't quick enough. It wasn't urgent enough for me. And so I began to, to speak before I began to write. And when I read all of these things that I had felt and been bottling up for years, uh, there was such a sort of redemption in that because I read and people clapped. And that was just an eye-opening moment for me, that I could read something that had been plaguing me for, for quite some time. And these folks are clapping for it. That's when I realized that this is what I want to do. Uh, I want to write. I started pursuing writing sort of more seriously, and then there was a mentor of mine who had... Um, who was from the central California area where I'm from, and he said, I told him, you know, I, I just can't see myself going to this sort of, you know, traditional academic, uh, you know, institution. And and, uh, and he said, you know, you might want to look into this place that I know of called Naropa. And I knew that there was just more. There was more to my way of thinking, my way of living, my way of approaching writing, um, my, and a way of integrating writing into my life. Um, and that's what I wanted to explore. I'm, I'm open to the possibilities now. I feel like... Um, in the words of Alice Walker, you know, that rather than putting more into my mind these days or putting more feeding into that neurosis, I'm able to sort of clear the mind so that I can see when that great story comes along. And Naropa is such a vital place. There aren't enough places like it in the world. I work for the Colorado Humanities and Center for the book, and my job is really just to promote authors, promote literature, create programs that engage young, young folks, that engage families and communities and give them the opportunity to interact with authors and um, have a real sort of educational interaction with books. And so that's, that's really my job is to promote all the things that, you know, that I love doing. We have one program called Writers in the Schools and it's actually based on a national program that's, um, that's out of Houston um, and New York. And the Writers in the Schools program um, employs uh, you know, established writers or at least published writers. Um, and also uh, students as well through the Denver University program. Um, and what we do is we train them to teach uh, writing, poetry, prose to uh, students across the state. And they can be anywhere from kindergarten age up to uh, high school. Really what I'm doing is not necessarily going to these classrooms and teaching them to be poets, um, but rather teaching, you know, teaching them the pleasures and possibilities of language in their lives. And actually, in some ways, giving them sort of a, a, an invitation to, to take ownership over language once again. Folks don't believe that we have stories to tell or stories worth telling or stories worth listening to, for that matter. Who wants to hear our stories? And that's something else I'm trying to teach these young folks, that we all have stories. So let's tease them out and let's talk about our stories and what makes them so vital to this global conversation that we're having. So this is actually a poem that's a small piece of a, of a small section of a larger poem called San Joaquin Sutra. So it goes like this. San Joaquin Valley, why are your back roads stricken with altars and your plastic carnations entombed among deflated balloons? What keeps the tattered photographs from disintegrating with the dew? Who dies in the back of a worker van, limbs splayed to the heavens? Who survives? Who arrives first? Who will harvest those bodies? who recalls them in a dream. How does one return the belongings? When names fade, where do they go? What country will claim the purgatory? What is the geography of hell? Who inherits this wreckage? And how deep the ravine of a child's memory? And are there two sides to the swallowtail's account? And what business has the worm entering the persimmon? What galaxies in the mollusk? Do crucifixes exclude? What irrigation of blood? Does a fig weep in the open air? Does water discriminate? And what about sirens? And how do we count the invisible? Can angels scale border walls? Who will open the gates for them? And who denies them? And what manner of love is this?